All right. Thank you. Thank you. Take a moment of silence, please. Thank you. Clerk Golick, roll call. Alexander. Present. Spatelli. Venez. Here. Kalwinski. Here. Torres. Here. Tyler. Here. Emerson. Here. Rakels. Warpole. Here. Clerk Gullick, let the record show us that Councilman Spitali has re entered the Thank room. Thank you. Here. Let the record show nine present, eight in chambers, one on Zoom. Mayor. Hi, everybody. How you doing? Nice to see you. Um, <clears throat> it's great to be here for my council report tonight. Last, well, since the last council meeting, I caught COVID, which is wonderful. It's not fun. Um, I'm twice vaccinated and boosted, and I caught COVID, and it knocked me down for three and a half days. So uh, actually four and a half days. Uh, day five, I could basically get out of bed again, but it's out there. Um, so if you're not boosted, get boosted. Uh, it's my recommendation. Anyway, um, <clears throat> we had, a <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry. We had a couple groundbreakings in the last couple weeks. First groundbreaking was in the second district. Uh, Councilman Torres was there. I appreciate him being out there. Meet by Lens, a company out of Illinois that's building a $35 million brand new plant at the former Queen and Candy site on Hoffman Street. Um, it was a wonderful ceremony. We've been working a long time on that economic development project, so it's wonderful that it's finally done and uh, had the groundbreaking. It was a wonderful day. And then we had another groundbreaking that was completely opposite weather. Um, this groundbreaking for Hudamaki was a big project, $100 million project. <coughs> We've been working that project also for not as long as Meet by Lens. Meet by Lens was close to eight years probably to get that deal closed. Hudamaki was more like a year and a half. Uh, we were in competition with a company out of southern, uh, southern United States. We were chosen for the $100 million investment, 140 new jobs, 250,000 square foot facility, uh, brand new technology. They're going to really change the whole orientation of Hudamaki so that if you know where the Pizza Hut is on the boulevard, when you look behind it, that's going to be looking at the front of the building. The new addition is going to be sort of like the frontage, looking at uh, Indianapolis Boulevard there. It's a big addition uh, for those of you that uh, it's north of the current building going off towards the trees. Uh, there will be access off 165th to get into the parking area. So uh, we were real happy. We had a monsoon that day. I don't know if it qualified, but it seemed like it. We were all under a tent, and there was rivers under the tent, and it was a groundbreaking I'll never forget. We had so much rain that knocked out all the power, and we were stuck underneath a tent. Interesting. It was a mud breaking. It was, it was a mud breaking. You know, everybody said, and I felt so embarrassed because all these people flew across the world to come to Hammond, and it literally started as soon as the groundbreaking was supposed to start. And so their image of Hammond is this widely torrential, rainy place. So, uh, but anyway, it's a great project. We're really happy about it. Um, we've been talking about uh, community meeting in Robertsdale. Uh, we talked to Councilman Mark, uh, said that before we went forward with any development for the Clark High School athletic fields, that we would go to the community and present proposals to them. We have three different proposals we're going to present to the community meeting. I believe that's on the 22nd, is that? 22nd at 5 p.m. at the Clipper Room. Thank you, Kevin. 22nd at 5 p.m. at the Clipper Room, June 22nd, 5 p.m. at the Clipper Room. Uh, community meeting on the three different proposals we're going to present to the community and get their feedback on. Um, we're real happy about this project. I think it's going to be real positive. Um, one part that we didn't deal with in this is basically from 122nd Street which is where the current firehouse is, all the way down to basically the, um, the, nature, preserve, uh, the nature center uh, right there. We left that, which is the location of the new firehouse, we left that all intentionally blank, Councilman Mark. Uh, we'll talk about that down the road. What we're talking about during this community meeting is basically the athletic fields area uh, where we want to build houses and things like that. So um, I was asked earlier today about the high schools, which is a great question. 
the high schools themselves, we, so Clark, Gavitt, any abandoned school, Columbia, we can't touch them right now. The school city's sitting on them. They can't put them up for sale because if they put a school up for sale, they could get bought by a charter school for a dollar. So the school city's paralyzed because of this lawsuit they have with the state of Indiana, and we're just sort of waiting. I wish we had control of the schools right now because we'd be moving forward with development. So what we're doing at Clark with the parking lots is legal because it's not the school itself. So when you get asked by the residents about Clark School or Gavit, um, we can't touch the buildings themselves or Columbia or whatever abandoned school. We can't touch the school themselves. We can touch the parking lot, the athletic fields, but the school itself is subject to litigation. So we're in the middle of that. I think it's ridiculous, but unfortunately, the legislature passed a law that said the schools have to sell abandoned buildings for a dollar to a charter school. They have to offer it up first. It's ridiculous. Uh, Gavit High School is worth far more than a dollar. The taxpayers of Hammond own that school, and we would literally have to sell it for a dollar. If it was worth $5 million or $1 million, we would have to sell it for a dollar. So until that litigation's worked out, you're not gonna see anything moving forward with the schools. So we just gotta make sure that the school city and Superintendent Miller keep good control of the schools, and it seems like they're doing that so far. Um, station two, Firehouse Station two project is moving. Seems like uh, it's moving forward real well. Bid specs are being prepared. It's gonna be bid out soon, awarded early, uh, 12 to 13 month construction project. Uh, so station two is gonna be located. It's moved from basically the corner of 122nd and Calumet down to where the, the nature center is, down in that area, so. Mayor, the environmental center property, yes, sir. is that where it's going to? Yes, sir, that sorry, the environmental down? center. Okay. Exactly, and then it'll be a little bit north of there, so sort of to the tennis courts. That'll be where the firehouse sits, closer to the pavilion, which is nice for the big crowd nights. And then everything north of that is intentionally left blank, as they say in the government. We're gonna talk about that down the road. Nothing's been prepared. So basically the frontage to Calumet will still be wide open. Got it. What we're talking about in this community meeting is everything else back in the fields. Thanks. Okay, yes sir. So we're setting that up for the 22nd. And last but not least, we got bad news yesterday about the Festival of the Lakes. For those of you that, have, that haven't heard, Toby Keith uh, is dealing with the side effects of radiation and chemotherapy from cancer, stomach cancer that he hadn't disclosed, and he canceled his entire tour, which includes City Hammond and the Festival of the Lakes, which is our Wednesday night. With one month to go, this is a tough task. Uh, so Eileen's brand new at Special Events Coordinator, and uh, she has an open night one month before the show. So. We're gonna try our best to fill it, and if we don't, we'll put local acts on or we'll go dark for the first time in our history. So um, hopefully that won't happen. We do, we're trying to salvage it right now. We have a pretty good offer on the table for a, a good act, a real good act actually. If we, it's accepted, it'll be a home run. So um, if you don't have any questions, that's all I have for my, uh, COVID sort of took out five days of my work, so. Councilman Kowinski. I can feel better. Yes, sir. Thank you. It, I'll be honest with you, Councilman Mark. I heard about the hangover from COVID. That's the real thing. I, I was clean. I was negative, but I couldn't. I couldn't get back to working out. I couldn't. It took me a full week to get back to sort of normal. But I feel back to normal right now. So, a quick question. One of the last meetings that you had your uh, report to us, you mentioned discussions with Polly John. Yeah. And. Are, have there been more and what I haven't what been part about? of any um, it was I'll be honest with you Councilman Mark the meeting we had with Polly John was I thought it was real positive I met with the ownership it seemed to me like they're really concerned about the allegations of the plastic going in the water we had a real good meeting they're telling us about the containment that they're establishing up there to prevent that from happening again um, I thought it was real productive we also talked about the future like if Polly John is not in that location which I personally feel would be wonderful the, the best case scenario would be if we could relocate Polly John and keep him in Hammond. Obviously, I don't want, but they're sort of out of place now because that whole area around Polly John with the Lost Marsh and that whole area has turned natural on them and they're the only industry really left in that area and they're, they're aware of it. Um, I thought it was, I'll be honest, I thought it was a real positive meeting. So, so are they open to making a move if we could find yes, sir. a place for them? Definitely. I definitely had that feeling and there's definitely, but, going to be follow up if there hasn't been already but I thought it was it could have been 
either way, one of those meetings you didn't know which way it was going to go. I thought it was real positive, being honest. They seem like really nice people, and they're very concerned about the allegations. They're working with IDEM. They're working with Hammond Department of Environmental. So I thought it was real positive, Councilman Mark. And next time I meet with them, I'll make sure you're there. And I apologize. I didn't know which way that was going. It could have been a horrible meeting for all we knew, but it was real positive. I appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Hi, Councilman. Hey, Mayor. Um, uh, construction on the bike bridge uh, between uh, on Calumet between Munster and Hammond has begun. Yes, I'm sir. Very happy about it. Me too. It's a great project. It's going to be wonderful. We're getting we got a lot of help on the bike trail bridge between Hammond and Munster from the Little Calumet River Basin Authority. Uh, Town of Munster helped us with it, so it's nice to have other people participating. And it's a that's a dangerous crossing for anybody that's on the street. It'll get everybody that's walking or riding up above the traffic, which will be nice. So it's very dangerous. Though. Yes, sir. It's really probably our most dangerous crossing. I remember what started that project with me was a letter from a Munster resident talking about how dangerous it was. So it's neat. Any other questions? You know, yes, sir. when I heard you had COVID, I'm a hypochondriac anyway, and I swore I was going to die because I had saw you the day before, and yeah. uh, I made myself sick. I'll be honest with you. I think I was in here the day before. Eh, yeah. I was in here you, the day yeah. before, actually. I'm glad nobody got COVID. But the Friday. <laughs> I didn't after, know I was contagious. I wouldn't have been here. The Friday after you caught it, I'm like, well, you got a free test. Why don't you take one? And I came back negative. By the so. way, my wife, Judge Marissa, is very good about these tests that they send for free. We got like 10 of them at my house right now. I, I know you could you could email the government or, and they'll send you a COVID test. And they're, I bought the same exact thing that Marissa got for free for 25 bucks in Indianapolis. And they work, they're really good. So for those of you out there, I'm sure you could find it. Just type in free COVID test and they'll send them to you. We get them in the mail, so. Does anybody else have any questions or comments? Uh, uh, Mr. President. Councilman Tyler. Hi, Councilman. It's not a question, but uh... It's just, uh, just want to thank you for, I know you're going down to Hoosier Boy State again yeah. to speak to the delegates. You're going to be there, right? Yeah, I'm, of course, I'm, this year I'm not able to volunteer at the program, but I'll be back next year. But yeah, awesome. I'll be there on Friday. Yeah, I leave Friday. I'm doing, it's funny, Friday, last week I did, on Friday I left, went to Angola, to Indianapolis for two meetings I had to go to. And this Friday I'm doing the same exact trip, Angola for Boy State to Indianapolis for the Democratic Convention. So a lot of traveling. And by the way, I don't use my city car for that. I wanted to point that out. So I appreciate you all. It's nice to see you. If there's no more questions. I'll go over here. Thank Thanks, you, guys. Thank you, Thank you. I, um, Number four, approval of minutes. President. Councilman Spitali. Make a motion to accept the minutes for May 23rd, 2022. Be placed on file, please. Second. Motion's been made. By Councilman Spitali, seconded by Councilman Emerson. Um, is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Uh, Councilman Rakos, okay, there you are. Clerk <laughs> ah. Golick, roll call. Alexander. Yes. Spitali. Yes. Venez. Yes. Kalwinski? Yes. Torres? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Emerson? Yes. Rakels? Yes. Warple? Yes, let the record show the motion carries nine in favor, zero opposed. Item number five, approval of claims. Mr. President. Councilman Rakos. I make a motion to approve claims beginning the date of 526-22 ending with claims dated 6-8 of 2022. Claim number 3297 through claim number 3669, the amount of $3,454,713.66. Second. Motion has been made by Councilman Rako, seconded by Councilwoman Venez. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Clerk Golick, roll call. Alexander. Yes. Spatelli. Yes. Venez. Yes. Kalwinski. Yes. Torres. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Emerson. Yes. Rakels. Yes. Warpo. Yes, let the record show nine in favor, zero opposed. Item number six, public hearings, there are none. Item number seven, communications. Does anyone have any communications? 
Mr. President. Councilman Tyler. Yeah, I have a few. Um, first, I just want to announce that the city of Hammond will be having their annual Juneteenth celebration this Sunday, June 19th at MLK Park from 2 to 4 p.m. Uh, the day before that, uh, New Zion Temple is also having a Juneteenth celebration along with the Father's Day celebration. Uh, I don't have the exact time in front of me, uh, but I believe it's late Saturday morning, early Saturday afternoon. I uh, also want to announce that, and each council person should have received this in their mailbox, but the first tee of Lake County, which is located here in Hammond, is having their annual golf outing, which is their biggest fundraiser of the year on Wednesday, June 22nd, uh, asking each council person to sponsor a whole sign to show their support of that organization. And I just wanna congratulate all of the 2022 graduates from the school city of Hammond um, on completing high school and going off to college or entering into their careers, whatever it is. I know uh, Hammond Central, of course, had their first inaugural graduation, which was a, a big success. Uh, Councilwoman Alexander and I were able to meet with the um, student council at Hammond Central. Um, and then this past Saturday, I was able to attend the School City of Hammond strategic planning kind of capstone. I've been a part of that committee for the past year, uh, and they're preparing to release their finalized strategic plan sometime this fall to the public, um, where residents will be able to take a survey to give feedback on the aspects of the strategic plan so that they can ratify that before actually going into implementation sometime, I believe in January of next year. So excited for the public to receive that. I think it's a great way for the city um, to be a part of what the school city is trying to do academically and social and emotionally for our students. Thank you. Does anybody else have any other communications? Does anybody else have any other communications? Does anybody else have any other communications? Hearing none, communications are now closed. <laughs> Item number eight, committee reports. Yes, Mr. President. Councilwoman Venez. Uh, the uh, Animal Control Committee met this evening, and uh, at the next council meeting, we will announce the next public uh, committee meeting for animal control to uh, discuss ordinance number 2219. So that announcement will be made at the next council meeting. Uh, then I'd like to move on to Crime Watch. Um, Community Watch at Mount Zion, uh, Pleasant View Plaza will be um, Wednesday, June 15th at 1 p.m. Uh, Harrison Park Crime Watch, Councilman Tyler, no, no July meeting, okay. Uh, Hessville Crime Watch will meet on Thursday, June 16th at 6 p.m. at the Gene Shepherd Center. And stay tuned for uh, the uh, location of the Whiting Robertsdale Crime Watch, which will be coming up uh, let me see, in July, that will be July 14th. <clears throat> um, not quite sure of the location for that just yet, so stay tuned, we'll announce that at the next council meeting. Um, also, the uh, City of Hammond Security Light Program is uh, once again uh, in, going to be in full swing. Uh, any uh, qualified applicant who owns and resides in your Hammond home can provide proof of home ownership and provide a valid Indiana driver's license or state ID can qualify for a uh, free dusk to dawn light to be installed at your home. This is a one-time offer for as long as you are in your home. So if you've already got one, don't submit a second application um, because you would be denied. The applications will be uh, received from June 21st through June 24th on the third floor of City Hall. And of course, um, quantities are limited, so uh, it's on a first come, first serve basis. 
and uh, I encourage everyone to uh, attend a community or crime watch in your neighborhood so you can um, find out what's going on in your neighborhood, know how to proceed, particularly with uh, the 4th of July coming up. <clears throat> um, we've already, with Memorial Day, heard the fireworks, and I'm sure the police department has gotten plenty of calls. But you can't just call and say, I, you, you know, somebody's shooting off fireworks. You have to have a specific address uh, to direct the police. So please attend one of those meetings so you know how to proceed in a case such as that because community is not just about me, it's about us. And uh, Mr. President, I was unable to attend the last Capital Improvements Board meeting, so Councilman Spitali is going to give us an update. That sounded like a horror movie there, didn't it? <laughs> Councilman Spitali. Yeah. Um, we had our Capital Improvement Board meeting was set uh, for the 6th of June. Um, we had uh, two fund allotments come along. We had we, have, we approved 25,800 for the Home and Avenue Reconstruction Phase 1, relocate water and sewer on Sibley, an American structural point design. And the second one we had was approved for 80065 for Holman Avenue, Phase 2, Russell Street to Douglas Street. Uh, the next meeting uh, will be set for June 21st. The work study session begins at 515, and the meeting will be followed by a 530 meeting in the uh, council chamber. Does anybody else have anything on the committee reports? Mr. President. <laughs> Councilman Tyler. Uh, I just have a question for Councilwoman Venez. Is there a plan to do the National Night Out this year? Uh, we are working on that. Okay. Uh, I do have the date reserved up at the splash pad, but uh, we're working on it. All right. Thank you. Does anybody else have anything on the committee reports? Any other committee reports? Um, Ma'am, this is for the council. There's a public expression period at the end of the meeting. Um, does anybody else have anything on the committee reports? Oh yeah, you have to sign your name up there if you want to speak and, sorry about that. Hearing none, committee reports are now closed. Item number nine, ordinances, third reading and final passage, there are none. Item number 10, introduction of ordinances. Item A, ordinance. 22-20 sponsored by Councilman Spitelli and the petitioner is the Mayor's Office of Economic Development. An ordinance to appropriate funds in the hotel motel innkeepers tax fund for economic development purposes in 2022. Mr. President. Councilman Spitelli. For first and second reading with a public hearing set for June 27, 2022. And the council is a whole meeting for June 27, 2022, for 5 o'clock. Second. Second. Motion has been made by Councilman Spitali, seconded by Councilwoman Alexander. Is there any discussion? Yeah, the gin keepers tax uh, fund for marketing purposes, also for promotional events and advertising. Thank you. Does anybody else have any discussion? Anybody else have any discussion? Hearing no further discussion, Clerk Golick, roll call. Alexander. Yes. Spitelli. Yes. Venez. Yes. Kalwinski. Yes. Torres. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Emerson. Yes. Rakels. Yes. Warple. Yes, let the record show the motion carries nine in favor, zero opposed. Item B, ordinance 22-21 sponsored by Councilman Torres, the petitioners, the City of Hammond Department of Redevelopment, an ordinance vacating a 14-foot wide alley of the 5200 block of Holman Avenue, lying between Rimback Street 
and Muna Court in the city of Hammond, Lake County, Indiana. Mr. President. Councilman Torres. Move for first and second reading, refer to council as a whole, and the public hearing set for June 27th, 2022 at 5 p.m. Second. Motion's been made by Councilman Torres, seconded by Councilman Emerson. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Mr. President. Councilman Torres. Is vacating a 14-foot wide alley west of uh, 5200 block of Holman in line between Rimback Street and Munich Court and for the purpose of redevelopment in support of Hammond Downtown Master Plan and to build a Rimback Square development. Thank you, Mr. President. Just to clarify on your original motion, it's got a public hearing set for the meeting on June 27th, but we have a council as a whole meeting set for 5 p.m., correct? Yes. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Is there any further discussion? Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, Clerk Golick, roll call. Alexander. Yes. Spatelli. Yes. Venez. Yes. Kalwinski. Yes. Torres. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Emerson. Yes. Rakels. Yes. Warple. Yes. Let the record show nine in favor, zero opposed. <laughs> Item C. Ordinance 22-22, sponsored by Councilman Torres. The petitioners, the Hammond Development of, Re of Redevelopment. An ordinance vacating a variable width alley of the 100 block of Sibley Street between Sibley Street and Rimback Street in the city of Hammond, Lake County, Indiana. Mr. President. Councilman Torres. Move for first and second reading referred to council as a whole with a public hearing set for June 27th, 2022. Second. At five o'clock. Second. Council as a whole at five o'clock? Yes. yes. Thank you. Motion has been made by Councilman Torres, seconded by Councilwoman Venez. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? M Mr. President. Councilman Torres. This ordinance is to vacate a 20-foot white alley located at uh, 100 block of Sibley uh, in, in Rimback Street. And it's for the purpose, again, for the redevelopment deemed necessary for Rimback Square and the rest of the downtown master plan. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Is there any further discussion? Is there any further discussion? Clerk Golick, roll call. Alexander. Yes. Spatelli. Yes. Venez. Yes. Kalwinski. Yes. Torres. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Emerson. Yes. Rakels. Yes. Warple. Yes, let the record show nine in favor, zero opposed. President Warple, that concludes the introduction of ordinances. Thank you, Clerk Golick. Item number 11, resolutions. Resol item A, resolution 22R-11, sponsored by Councilman Tyler, the petitioner is the Mayor's Office of Economic Development. Uh, Mr. President. Councilman Tyler. I move for adoption of resolution 22R-11. Second. Motion has been made by Councilman Tyler, seconded by Councilman Spitali. Is there any discussion? Mr. President. Councilman Tyler. This is uh, just the annual compliance document that we have uh, businesses who are receiving tax abatements uh, complete. Um, like I said, we go through this every single year, so just a normal document uh, that we have to approve. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Is there any further discussion? Is there any further discussion? Clerk Golick, roll call. Pardon me? You need to read it? 
Did you read it? <laughs> Did we get ahead of ourselves on this? The resolution by Clerk Gullah, could you read the resolution by title? A resolution of the Hammond City Council approving certain form CF-1 as filed with the Common Council of the City of Hammond as the designating body by applicants previously approved for economic revitalization area deductions from assessed value pursuant to Indiana Code 6-1.1-12-.1. Mr. President. Councilman Tyler. I move for adoption of Resolution 22R-11. Second. Motion's been made by Councilman Tyler for adoption of 22R. I, the number's off the page. What's, what is it? 22R11. <laughs> by Councilman Tyler, seconded by Councilman Spitali. Is there any discussion? Mr. President. Councilman Tyler. Uh, once again, this is the annual compliance document that we have organizations who are receiving tax abatements complete. Um, we go through this every single year, so this is just up for the council to approve. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Is there any further discussion? Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, Clerk Golick, roll call on the resolution. Alexander. Yes. Spatelli. Yes. Venez. Yes. Kalwinski. Yes. Torres. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Emerson. Yes. Rakos. Yes. Warpole. Yes, let the record show nine in favor, zero opposed. The motion carries. President Warpole. That concludes the reading of the resolutions. Thank you, Clerk Golick. Is there anybody have anything on the new and unfinished business? Yes, Mr. President. Councilwoman Venez. I would like to make a motion to reappoint uh, Bernie Graziola to the South Shore Convention and Visitors Authority. Second. Motion's been made by Councilwoman Venez. As stated, seconded by Councilman Tyler. Is there any discussion? Is there any? Uh, Mr. President, I, I would just like to say that this, I should have clarified that this is a reappointment. He's currently serving and he will continue to serve. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else have any further discussion? Yes, Mr. President. Councilman Kowinski. Is, is there a resolution or was there one in the past? Or? No, there was no We council. We just voted on it in, uh, what, two years ago, was it? It's just Don't we usually do it by resolution. We've done them both. We've done them on we've done them on a motion on the floor, and we've done them by resolution both. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Is there any further discussion? Is there any further discussion? Clerk Gullick, roll call on the motion. Alexander. Yes. Spatelli. Yes. Venez. Yes. Kalwinski. Yes. Torres. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Emerson. Yes. Rakos. Yes. Warpole. Yes. Let the record show nine in favor, zero opposed. Councilman Venez, do, we, do you know when the next appointments are due? Do you have that sheet with you or no? Um, I believe uh, at the end of the year. I don't have it with me, but I believe it's at the end of the year. The next upcoming appointment? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there anybody else got anything on the new and unfinished business? Mr. President. Councilman Tyler. Uh, I just want to share with the public that uh, Mayor Thomas McDermott has announced that due to the extreme heat expected this week, I think we're supposed to get a heat index of up to 107. The city of Hammond has mobilized and identified several buildings as cooling centers, including the Gene Shepherd Center, Lost Marsh Golf Course Clubhouse, and the Hammond Civic Center. You may use these facilities during regular operating hours, which is 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And if necessary, uh, if a power outage were to occur, these shelters would also remain open during the overnight hours. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else have anything under new and unfinished business? Mr. President. Councilman Spitali. Uh, the uh, FOP uh, memorial is tomorrow at the police station starting at 2 o'clock. 
Anybody else have anything on the new and unfinished business? Mr. President. Councilman Tyler. Sorry, but I forgot to also announce once again that Mayor's Night Out is at Hammond Central High School this Wednesday at 6 p.m. 6.30 p.m., sorry. So that will be the third district Mayor's Night Out this Wednesday, June 15th at Hammond Central High School at 6.30 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else have anything on the new and unfinished business? Does anybody else have anything on the new and unfinished business? Nobody has anything on the new and unfinished business. New and unfinished business is now closed. <laughs> Item number 13, public expression. George? He passes. Celestina? Yeah, how do you say the last name right? Geronimo. Geronimo. You got three minutes, and please state your name and address, please. Um, Celestina Geronimo. I'm just, um, I'm not going to keep you guys long, but I just wanted to discuss about this issue that we've been having since Chicago closed down all the um, puppy mills, you know, stuff like that. And so I currently worked at a place where I firsthand experienced it, and it traumatized me. Like, seeing poor innocent puppies just alive one day, and then I come in the next day, they're dead. And he says, oh, that's, that happens. It should not happen. There's no um, licensed vet that works at this shop. I have more than enough proof that, you know, a lot of customers went there and bought a puppy. No longer than two weeks later, the puppy ended up dying. That's on some of them. The other uh, few people, it was like six in total. Their puppies had infections or they had parvo. They were sick, they were hospitalized, and it's just not okay. You know, they're, they're already overpriced as there is, and he's selling sick puppies to people for their kids. Like, it's just, it's just really sad to me. I don't know if I can pass these. Um, also, there was workers there who also didn't get paid, unfortunately, but they, they spoke up about how disgusting, you know, the nature is for the puppies that are getting sold on the street for us to, you know, take home with us. And um, he has prior um, warnings also about this, and he continues to do it, and he thinks it's okay. So I'm coming on here behalf on me, and because I had to go through that, and all the mad and sad customers that had to go home and deal with that, because that's another bill on top of a bill that they already had to pay because he doesn't refund. So I don't know if I'm able to show you guys this really quick. Or... And I also have messages of him telling me that gloves and right here is the review. So yeah, it's, it's really important to me, so that's why I came out here today, because I never experienced a job like that in my life. And I love dogs, I love them to death, so <laughs> it just wasn't a job for me, and that's why I'm here to tell you guys about it, because I feel like it needs to be spoken about, because nobody else has, so. Thank you. Yeah, sorry, this just feels like court. <laughs> So yeah, I just want you guys to understand, because I'm not the only one in pain. Like, you know, everybody gone through, the hurt, gone through the hurt, so, and I felt their pain. I've seen mad customers come in, and it's just, it's heartbreaking. I can't do anything to save them, but hopefully you guys can. Thank well, you. we're having a, like Councilwoman Vanez said, we're having a further meeting that'll be announced at the next meeting, and I encourage you to come and express yourself oh, definitely. then. definitely. I will, for the people who are afraid to come out and speak about it, I will. So. Thank you. Yeah. Does anybody on Zoom wish to speak? Does anybody on Zoom wish to speak? Seeing nobody, um, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion has been made and seconded by Councilman Spitali, seconded by Councilwoman Alexander. Clerk Golick, roll call. Alexander. Yes. Spitali. Yes. Venez. Yes. Kalwinski. Yes. Torres. Yes. 
Tyler. Yes. Emerson. Yes. Rakos. Yes. Warpo. Yes. Motion, I mean, the meeting's adjourned.